In 1835, Native American tribes decreed not to divulge the herbal Indian medicine secrets of their ancestors. To do so would result in censure and banishment from the tribe. But some medicine men believe that this wisdom should be shared freely among all people. Billy Rainwater Barnes has helped countless people in his lifetime with his healing herbal medicines that he refers to as Billy's Tea. I take his stuff every day. And the reason I take his tea every day is very simple. I don't want to die of cancer. There is spiritual gratification because it's not like just taking a pill out of the bottle and ingesting it. There is an entire process, and I'm, in, I'm a part of that entire process when taking the tea. A lot of people are putting different types of tea out now. They're saying as Indian teas, and they'll have like 30 or 40 different ingredients in it. Once you go past what's supposed to be in it, then you change the chemical structure of what we make, and it no longer will work. You don't know, you may be making a, a, an arsenic. Well, I was diagnosed with uh, myeloma, which is a form of cancer that affects the uh, blood supply to the kidney. And that's, that's where the problem ultimately rests and I, and I called you to see, you know, just to tell you that I had this problem. And I told him I just want one or two words out of his mouth and that was how long you had to live. And when he told me three months, maybe. Well, you came to Houston and uh, uh, lectured me about the uh, <laughs> necessity of staying with the tea. It was not long after that that uh, I was tested by the oncologist and she congratulated herself on having cured me. She said, well, you're doing real good. The steroid treatment is, is helping you now. And I said, well, it's not just that. I says, I've been, uh, been supplied with some, some tea. She said, well, do you realize that stuff could kill you? And my wife was sitting there and she says, well, so could chemotherapy. During the early 1960s, Dr. Charles A. Bruch ran a clinic in Massachusetts and was also a personal physician to the late John F. Kennedy. Jack was a good friend, all right. I didn't like his brother, Teddy, but Teddy has a, one of the relatives that had uh, cancer and they couldn't take care of him. I think it was Dr. Bush was telling him he knew of uh, a alternative medicine he could get. When they made it for him, he was already told that he was going to die, and he now, you know, is still running around. So I guess he didn't die. It worked. I pass on what I've learned, and each part. It, as long as you pass it on, it's when a person clams up and keeps quiet is when things die. A few doctors today are coming out, and they're going with the alternative medicine because they found out, hey, listen, this stuff really works. I'm convinced that whatever is the ingredients in that tea definitely help her culminate the tumor and control it. She would have otherwise definitely been dead. At this very moment, President Bush is trying to push a thing through the courts, and they've been doing this for years, to make it illegal for my people to go out and gather the plants that we use for our medicines. If it's not covered by the Food and Drug Administration, they get a kickback off of it, then they don't want us to have it, and we'll keep gathering. They're going to lock this up. There's going to be battle fought. We're going to use our plants. Do the drug companies really want to find a cure for cancer and other diseases? 
with some drugs markups as high as 570,000 percent. Where is their profit in finding a cure? Why kill the cash cow when you can milk it for all it's worth? The drug companies are in the camouflage business, alleviating symptoms so we can function well enough to tolerate our disease. Thank you.